Good evening. The Board of Commissioners meeting is now called to order. We ask Reverend Gray to please lead us in prayer. <laughs> oh, gracious Father, Lord, we thank you for a wonderful, bright, sunshiny day as we come together uh, on one accord. Lead us and guide us. Allow us to have different opinions, but one accord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Lord, please rise for the national invitation. Our flag is gone. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. At this time, we'd like to uh, introduce Mr. Dempsey Benton from the governor's office. And he'll lead us in the meeting right now. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor, members of the board. Thank you for inviting us here tonight. Uh, it's good to be with you. Uh, we have a team of uh, folks from the state uh, here to uh, review with you several projects that has been, that have been uh, on your list of high interest, and we hope. Our updates tonight will be helpful to you. Uh, before we uh, move into the uh, detailed discussions, I'd like to introduce uh, two individuals who uh, are just joining our state recovery team, uh, but uh, are going to be extremely critical in the work we do in, in Princeville and in the region. Uh, first of all, I'd like to introduce uh, Joe Durham, who is our state recovery liaison for Princeville. Joe? Good afternoon. It's a pleasure to be here, and I look forward to working with all of you. Of course, uh, some of my background, and some of you may know me, good to see you, Reverend, Reverend Gray. Worked here as Edgecombe County Manager for eight years, and also served as the Planning Development Director for City of Rocky Mountain five years, so 13 years as part of the uh, state. And uh, look forward to again working with you and with the city manager and look forward to working on both short-term efforts as well as long-term. So uh, looking forward to this engagement and working with Mr. Benton, Mrs. Fraser, and others. So uh, thank you very much. It's a pleasure. Thank you for being here, Mr. Darwin. Thank you. Uh, next, uh, I'd like to introduce Henry Lancaster. Henry is just joining us, and he is uh, going to be working as a regional recovery liaison, which will include Edgecombe County, but will also include uh, counties extending up to the north, uh, Port Berkeley, and, and also uh, to the south to include Pitt County. So Henry will have a regional uh, assignment, but certainly will be uh, working with folks in Edgecombe as well as his regional assignment. So Henry, anything to... Uh, good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of the council. I had an opportunity once before to assist Princeville when it was in a little bit of deep water. <laughs> Here we are again. And this time, I want to really stress to you how much support you do have from this current administration. Because I had a couple of conversations with the people down here, and they expressed the need for some additional assistance. And I visited with Dempsey and others in the governor's office and they immediately responded. I mean, it's only been three weeks since we had that conversation. And um, there is a substantial amount of energy, experience, and commitment in place to be of assistance. We just want to make sure that everyone understands what everyone needs and what it takes to get those needs satisfied and for the things that are challenging that we're able to talk it out and come up with a solution. I look forward to working with you. Thank you for being here, Mr. Lancaster. Uh, at this time, let me introduce uh, other members of our team who are here tonight. Uh, and, and first of all, introduce our uh, North Carolina Department of Transportation team who are critical in discussing uh, one of those key issues of uh, flooding related uh, problems. And so, to, and we'll, we'll come back to them for a report. But at the beginning, let me introduce. Mike Holder, who's the chief engineer for the state Department of Transportation. Uh, Tim uh, Little, Tim is our division, is your division engineer. Uh, Ronnie Keeter is the district engineer, who they are here uh, on our team for discussions tonight. 
Uh, we have Joe Stanton, who is uh, Assistant Director of Emergency Management, works with Mr. Sprayberry, and Libby Smith, who is the business officer working with Mike Sprayberry. Uh, and uh, so we've got those folks, and uh, working uh, with me in the recovery office is Ryan Flynn. Ryan, uh, here. So uh, we've got uh, folks here who hopefully can uh, participate in uh, our discussions. Uh, Governor's Office, uh, the North Carolina Emergency Management, and the Department of Transportation are committed to helping all survivors of Hurricane Matthew recover and be safer. And while the state will continue to advocate strongly for the Army, Army Corps of Engineers to begin work on the levy, the state will not wait for Congress to appropriate funds for these projects. Uh, and in partnership with the town, we will act actively pursue improvements uh, that can be done uh, both on the flooding uh, as well as other developmental uh, opportunities uh, and recovery. So we're, we are committed, as Henry said, uh, as a team to, to work with you uh, as we go forward. And to start our uh, discussion and review with you, let me call on uh, Mike Sprayberry, who's our Director of the Division of Emergency Management and our operating leader uh, in the whole recovery effort uh, to uh, start us off. Thank you, sir. And uh, first of all, let me thank um, Mr. Benton for his leadership. And you've heard a couple of words, you've heard a couple of times where the word commitment was used uh, already tonight. And I can assure you that uh, Mr. Benton and the governor's office are 100% are committed to the recovery of Princeville. And that one of the things that they keep telling us is that everything's on the table and we're looking for all good ideas and, and, uh, and we want everybody to, to have a voice and a say in how we do it. So an overview of the recovery to date, I'm pretty sure that you don't want to hear about the whole state and you want me to speak a little bit more about Princeville. And so, uh, you know, right now we've got uh, 14 project worksheets for public assistance. And what that public assistance is, is, is repairing roads and, and government buildings and things like that. Um, and so uh, the value of, of these uh, project worksheets is about $1.5 million. Um, Twelve of them have already been uh, approved and had federal funds obligated uh, for them in the amount of $753,117. Um, we paid out uh, on the National Flood Insurance uh, Program uh, $6.3 million. And, um, and there's been a lot of money uh, in individual assistance for housing assistance. Uh, um, for individual housing, $3.5 million. Um, the HA program, Housing Assistance Program, for uh, $2.4 million, and other needs assessment, $1.1 million. And then we've had some small business administration loans, uh, $1.1 million for homes, and business loans, about $164,000. I know when you start talking about uh, small business administration for home loans, it sounds doesn't sound intuitive, and, it, and it's a difficult process. We know this. so. Some millions of dollars have been spent already, but we know that Princeville is a long way from being fixed. We know that, and that's why we're here tonight to talk to you about some of the other things that are, that are going on. Um, we have, you know, maintained a, a housing center with, uh, so that folks can get uh, crisis counseling, uh, disaster case management uh, counselors, um, housing counselors and it's our commitment to you that we're going to keep that up and that's one of the things that Mr. Durham's going to be working on to help us make sure that that uh, those counselors and those uh, that they are out there working with folks and that you know many of the programs that we have are, are bureaucratic in nature and it's hard for anybody to understand these programs and so we need to make sure we've got feet on the ground with people that are experienced in these programs to help people work their way through them. Um, you heard me talk about project worksheets. We have, we did place uh, Princeville at the top of the queue to make sure that we got those project worksheets 
approved. We've only got a couple to go. Um, we do have a lot of hazard mitigation projects. Uh, there's been over 300 applications put in for hazard mitigation. So um, there's a group of about 40, 45 that have been put in for what they call the expedited process. I'll be briefing Mr. Benton on Wednesday morning at 8 o'clock with uh, recommendations for how we move forward with those expedited projects. And those, when I say expedited projects, that means buyouts, elevations and reconstructions and so those reconstructions are basically if you can demo a house take it down to the ground and then rebuild it for less than $150,000 then you could be eligible for a hazard mitigation uh, reconstruction so what we have done in our prioritization process and with everything in the whole state well all the 50 counties that have uh, had a federal disaster declaration as a result of Hurricane Matthew, we have placed Princeville at the top of the queue to receive the expedited hazard mitigation projects. And so we'll be making those recommendations to Mr. Benton Monday, and we hope to, to have the, those projects approved and, and notifications shortly thereafter. And we anticipate uh, beginning the assessments and the engineering work in August. Now, that does sound like a long time, and it is a long time. It's not as fast as we would want it to be. But it has, you know, with all money, and this is both 75% federal and 25% state, you have to go through some bureaucratic uh, wickets to ensure that the money's being spent appropriately. As taxpayers, that's what everybody wants. And so we will do that. We will do our due diligence. But we are making it. He, he's got a favorite word. It's called compressing the timeline, a favorite phrase, I should say. And so we're going to do our best to compress that timeline. Um, we are also working on, um, on the, uh, there, we know that there are a lot of folks that uh, got play, put out of their housing um, because they were HUD clients. And HUD does not have very many programs for disaster survivors. In fact, you know, they pretty much don't have any at all. And so but we're continuing to work with them, but we also linking up with FEMA so that the folks in Princeville that were in HUD housing, we're trying to get them placed as quickly as possible into <coughs> manufacturing housing units. You and I know them as, as you know, mobile homes. They call them MHUs, manufactured housing units. And so right now there's um, about 25 yet to go. I think we've got 68 that are already in MHUs that are licensed in at any rate. So we're pushing that hard because we want to get people out of the hotels that are in the hotels. There's still um, 41 households in Edgecombe County. I can't tell you which ones are in Princeville, but my if I had to hazard a guess, I'd say probably most of them were from Princeville. So we've got to get those folks out of the motels and into a housing solution. For my agency, the North Carolina Division of Emergency Management, that's our top priority is getting people out of those hotels. Our second priority is to develop affordable housing and expand affordable housing. And so uh, we may, we'll talk about that later. And then the last thing that I'm going to tell you about, the, yeah, about the last thing I'm going to tell you about is um, there's, a, there's a group called the North Carolina Community Development Initiative. And I don't know if y'all know Tara Kinchin. She was around during Hur Hurricane Floyd. Um, she's a great lady. She's the president and CEO. She's got a landlord program and a, uh, and a shovel-ready project program. She's going to be here with Dr. I'm Andrea Harris. I think many of you know Dr. Harris. She's a great lady. She's going to be down here this Friday, and she's going to be assessing Princeville to determine uh, what types of opportunities there are to um, <coughs> help landlords repair uh, some of their affordable housing properties, as well as to help identify uh, any shovel-ready projects for affordable housing that may be available. And then if she can do that, we would be looking forward to um, leveraging that with our with the private sector to bring in more funding. So.
pending any questions that you might have of me at this time, I, I, I guess, sir, you wanted to wait till the end for questions. Yeah. I'll, I'll turn it over to uh, Mike Holder to talk about DOT. Mike. Thank you, Director. <clears throat> Good afternoon, Mr. Mayor, members of the commission. Good to see you. Appreciate the invitation to come down and spend some time with you. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to take the matter of privilege and ask my uh, division, your division four <coughs> staff to come up and uh, let them stand behind me as my Praetorian guard <laughs> to answer any questions or maybe any Tim, if you look at the President, I'll up. Because these are the guys that are on the ground every day with your, your people are trustful with all the people in the division. And uh, Tim is a division engineer. He is the uh, chief executive officer for the five or six or seven counties in Division 4. Um, Ronnie is a district engineer and uh, he covers Miss Fraser County, Halifax County, National County. And then Gray is your uh, is your man on the street every day here in Ashcom County. He's responsible for all the maintenance activities and scheduling all the maintenance and making sure that the jobs and the tasks that are assigned to him are carried out and completed to uh, the expectations that are set. So these are the guys that will be your main contact points. Um, I'm the chief engineer, so I get to kind of play all over the state. You characterize this that, but kind of solve problems all over the state. But um, once again, thanks for the opportunity to come speak to you relative to the DOT. Um, participation on this team, I think, uh, like Director Sprayberry did, gives you been to his leadership out of the governor's office. And uh, Joe, appreciate you joining the team, Ryan Plan too. Uh, great participant in this uh, effort to make sure that we're dotting all the I's and crossing all our T's relative to trying to, to mitigate, minimize, and avoid a, a future occurrence of what's happened in the past. Obviously, the Corps of Engineers study took a long time, about two decades. So the department has commissioned a nationally known uh, engineering consultant, Moffat and Nickel, who are experts at hydraulic analysis for basically determining what effect doing some, one thing has on something else. So they're in the process of preparing a two-dimensional model for this that will tell us by gating pipes or gating culverts on the 64 levee, you know, what effects does that have in minimizing the elevation of water and principle, how much it would rise, what effect does that have in Tarboro? You know, we want to be, uh, we, want, we do not want to sacrifice safety for speed. We never want to do that. So, uh, and, and Mr. Uh, Dipsy will tell you, Mr. Bell will tell you that last week when my, originally we talked about this, uh, my hydraulics engineers, which are my water engineers in Raleigh, uh, they said that it'll take 12 months to do the study. I'm like, no, I want to do that in three. <laughs> they kind of freaked out a little bit. But, um, so they finally talked talk me into about six months. So that's the, the goal that we have set, is to have the study uh, completed within six months. They say there's a lot of computer calculations and a lot of complicated uh, data gathering and models that have to be run to, to make sure that we're safe in the analysis that we do and the recommendations that come out of that particular analysis are sound and a good value for the money and actually have a effect, actually solve part of the problem for the money that we spend as opposed to just putting something out there and not doing anything. We don't want to do that. So, but we're not going to sit still during the time that the model is being built and prepared. We're not going to sit still because we're going to do two things. We're going to gate uh, five pipes that are along 64 because we know as a department that those are uh, critical points that need to be gated anyway. We're 100% certain that the model will show us that those pipes will need to be have gates put on. So we intend to do that. Uh, I was talking to the gentleman here walking in and uh, they're going to prepare a purchase order contract to bid it to a contractor and we'll need to get materials ordered. Obviously the gates have to be fabricated because they have to be a certain size. We probably will have to put head walls, concrete on the pipe itself and then attach the gates to the head, or to the head walls themselves. So our intent is to be done with that by the end of August. So that's the first milestone that you're holding to. 
in the laws on the five gates. Secondly, um, if my calendar math serves me correctly, uh, six months from now will be November, 1st of November. So the intent is, is to have the study finished and presentation to you as a commission for recommendations by uh, before Thanksgiving and no later than Christmas. So then we can uh, see where we're at, what kind of recommendations we have, what kind of effects it will have, always keeping safety in mind as our full bus go. And then uh, we can talk to you about, show you maps and things that uh, would help solve this issue. And then we also, in the meantime, while the study is going on, uh, Gray's maintenance forces will be going out and looking at culverts <coughs> and pipes that uh, feed water or feed water out of Pressful and make sure that debris is cleared out of those, that bridge uh, drift, we call it drift, that, that bridges is cleared, the debris is, uh, is cleared and the pipes are cut around where they have the full uh, diameter of the pipe available for drainage. So make the, the pipe work more effectively and efficiently. So those two things, we'll have that done by August 2. So the two milestones in the near term are the gates on those five pipes, clearing around the, uh, all the pipes and the bridges and cutting that vegetation back. And then November to December time frame presentation of the results of the study. I'm glad to answer any questions you guys may have. I kind of <coughs> like to always tell uh, where I go, my personal connection. Uh, I'm not a stranger to Edgecombe County. Um, I spend a weekend every Labor Day down here at the farm down off 111, uh, hunting doves. And uh, I don't know if this would help me or not, <laughs> or not credibility wise, but Ben Mayo and his uh, family are really good friends of mine. So I spend it down there with him and uh, his family bunch of other guys from outside the Charlotte area. They were late today. Hutton does. Yes, question. Yes, sir. Uh, when you start the, uh, the monitoring and you're looking at the, the problems, yes, sir. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm semi-retired. Mm -hmm. so I got a lot of time on my hands during the day. Everybody else got a job. So mm -hmm. I'd like to be not a supervisor, but I'd like to be there watching some of this stuff. Sure. Okay. Yeah. I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Um, once the study is done, uh, and is determine what needs to happen to, to prevent the massive water and, and coming to Princeton again. Yes, ma'am. How soon would it be before the work actually start? Well, I've committed to Mr. Uh, Benton uh, 1.5 million of the department's money. So the five gates probably we're looking at maybe a hundred thousand dollars, something like that. The study's three hundred and some thousand, so we're you know looking at a balance of probably a million dollars or one point one. So we'll look at whatever recommendations come out and what we can mm -hmm. afford within the context of that money, and then we'll implement the recommendations immediately based on you know what what the money can cover. And the time frame of that, once that's determined. Uh, once we present the study, let's say that's Thanksgiving or Christmas, uh, and, and these guys will tell you I like solving problems quickly, <coughs> and we'll implement probably within a month afterwards, after we determine the scope of work. Obviously, we have to procure contractors, mm -hmm. have to order materials and, and those type of things that go to any kind of heavy construction project. But uh, you know, critical path-wise, I take the material procurement, whether it's additional gates, especially on box culverts, because they're a very specialized order. Um, <coughs> so I would think by you know, next spring, have substantial work done. Last week we had uh, Mr. Lewis, Bobby Lewis. Yes, sir. Down in, uh, he looked at our maps and, and pointed out like that where the dip is. Yes, yes sir. That it may be even easier to build a levee on the other side, mm -hmm. just in case if, if we did get a flood, it wouldn't come over the road mm -hmm. if it was blocked. So I don't know if that's in your plan or not. But well, that's something that the study will tell us would be necessary. And if that's the case, you know, we may have to procure additional right of way or we'll have to see what kind of environmental impacts are there too, weapons wise and such. But you know, all these things have to be done in the sequence. 
Uh, they have to be done, once again, for sacrifice, safety, for speed. They have to be done sequentially and make sure that we're uh, protecting everybody, including the human environment and the natural environment. The human environment the most, of course. We'll be glad to have you just at the last one. Thanks. <laughs> Is Tom, Tom Barr is in this equation too. Yes, sir. Uh, I had an issue with everybody knows I'd be talking about the dog lady. Mm -hmm. I'm well aware of the dog lady. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> but if we could do something down there at the, at the point, shallow point, mm -hmm. it would eliminate and prevent some of that work from coming back on East Tom Barr's side as right. well as coming out. And I can talk to you more in detail about that. Yes, sir. Glad to. I have a question. Yes, will this study will it also um, include the infrastructure of Princeville, the ditches, the canals, and the blockage and the drainage in Princeville? Will that have anything to do yes. with this study? Well, I mean, it's going to be a comprehensive hydraulic. When I say hydraulic, that means all the ditches, all the pipes, all the low lying areas. It'll be a comprehensive 2D model of what happens when certain you know, rainfall events occur. Okay. So it'll give you a, a visual map or visual uh, sequence of what floods first, what fills up first, you know, what kind of measures would work to prevent that or to mitigate that. Um, so it'll be a very comprehensive uh, look and, and that's why it's taken six to nine months because a lot of computer time involved, a lot of data crunching that needs to be done to make sure it's, it's correct. How, how different do you foresee this study from the Army Corps of Engineers study? I'm sure that there will probably be elements of the Army Corps of Engineers study that are concurrent with what our recommendations are. And, um, you know, obviously it still remains with the governor's office and with DOT and everybody in state government a priority for the Corps of Engineers to uh, prioritize this and, and program it in the congressional budget. Uh, at the congressional delegation, I was up there in January, and they, uh, Senator Burr, Senator Tillis, and the uh, all the congressional delegation, all the representatives talked about, you know, this issue and the need to get the core funded and get them doing the, uh, the part of their responsibility that this study you know, demonstrates that they need to do. It's pretty expensive things that, that they need to do. Um, but I'm sure there will be overlapping elements that we find uh, are duplicated in one study to another. So from a transportation perspective, you know, that'll, that's where we'll focus, obviously, because our mission is transportation. But if it ends up providing uh, relief and mitigation relative to flooding and serves a transportation purpose, then it's a win. -win. I've been listening to other mayors in eastern North Carolina, and one of the major issues that keep coming up over and over is the dredging of the rivers. Yes, sir. Uh, is that a possibility? Uh, not for our department. Right, not for right. the team, but it would be. Um, I mean, I'll be totally open and transparent with you. We, we have a challenge with the poor dredging our inlets at the coast, and you know, they all it's always a funding situation there, so it would have to be uh, pretty extraordinary, I guess, that Congress would fund enough dredging money, allow them to dredge the channels, the, the coastal channels, in addition to some of the rivers to deepen the basins of those. So it would be more expensive to dredge the rivers than to pay for the flood damage that we received just this week. Not Princeville, but Eastern North Carolina. That would, I, would, I would not take a stab and answer that. I, you know, every, every situation is different and every situation has its unique circumstances. So it, that's a very difficult question. Really. Yeah, I know global warming is a real, is real. And flooding is going to continue to be a, a major hazard for at least Eastern North Carolina. Matter of fact, the United States of America, even right. in, in the Midwest. Right. Um, so something has to be done. Yeah, I saw that footage on uh, the news the other day about the, the massive floods out in Kansas in the Midwest. It's just terrible. Mm -hmm. Very tragic. What are some of the low hanging fruit that we can handle, that can be handled, so that we can get some? some bit of comfort or assurance that, because we don't know when a, another flood may come. We just don't know that. But just to help us to say we feel a little bit more comfortable. And, and of course, I, we know that the, the mitigation has been offered. And while we understand that that is a safety mechanism that's been put into place, right. 
it's not as attractive for the our constituents sure. as <clears throat> as one would think. Um, it's almost like you know you, we've been displaced once, and then when the time for the mitigation, we'll be displaced another time. What's some low hanging fruit that you can kind of give us to kind of have some bit of hope that? Well, I think the uh, Mayor Pro Tem, the, the three things that we're doing, we're going to do in a very short period of time, is the low hanging fruit. It's installing the additional gates on those uh, those those pipes in the one part of 64, and then uh, clearing out all the brush and all the debris around the pipes to make sure they're working effectively and efficiently as they can. And you know, discharge, I mean, drain the biggest drain area and as fast as they can. And then also <coughs> implementing the most positive aspects of the study that would have the most benefit to your community and then also to the transportation. So in, in my opinion, that's the that's the low hanging fruit that you as a commission can point to to your constituents that you know the core said we're gonna do something for twenty years and now to Governor Cooper and, and Secretary Trogman and Secretary Hooks uh, with, with Mike Sprayberry and his uh, emergency management staff. Uh, we're, we're here tonight, and we're going to be here, dedicated to making sure that we do actionable things that do improve the situation on the ground. And this won't be a one-time visit. I mean, I'm, I'm more than willing to come back and speak with you on a monthly basis to give you progress reports if you would like me to on every month, every other month, or, you know, whatever your schedule. Uh, they like. And I guess I'm, I'm not trying to, to, to be the dead horse, um, but I guess the thing that, that kind of makes me a little jittery and I won't blame I won't hold <laughs> this against you but but I, I keep trying to say in my head when I'm a core engineer came in and they said it took how, how many years to do that Two study, to that study. Said, yes, and then when they finally came in to Princeville and said we got the study we got the answers here you are this is what needs to happen and then when they said but there's no money to do this and that was what disappointed me because in my mind, when you make a plan or when you study something, somewhere down the road, you have some money somewhere that's so that when you found and figure out what needs to happen, you can say, let's go to work, let's make it happen. And I'm, I'm not going to hold you better against you for what was said, but I guess I don't have a real, real, real warm and fuzzy for that. Well, and, I, and I, you know, I, I definitely empathize with, with you and your commission and your constituents relative to uh, the fact that nothing's been done in the past. Mm -hmm. And you're perfectly uh, perfectly fine to be doubting of whether we're going to do anything. But all I can tell you is that... I'm not doubting I'm going to give you my, <laughs> give you my word, give you my word <laughs> that we are going to do the things that we just outlined. We will be back before you to present the findings. And then, you know, anything that can be done on a tangible uh, benefit that, you know, makes a difference. I mean, that's something that uh, Mr. Benton or Dempsey will have, and I will have to discuss and, uh, and talk with Secretary Trogdon and uh, Governor Cooper about relative to, you know, where's the money coming from? How are we going to fund these type of things? But, you know, well, you got to identify the solutions to the problem first before you can start.